In April of 2016, cavers from the provinces of Quebec and Alberta in Canada will be attempting to reach and explore Castleguard Cave in the Rockies, Canada's largest known cave. This expedition has to take place during the cold weather season since the cave is flooded with water during the summertime. The water is mostly from melting snow and ice from the mountain. To reach the cave's entrance, located at 2,016 meters of altitude, they have to ski for a complete day, pulling along them a sleigh weighing close to 70 pounds. They will take this opportunity to survey the passages and document from an underground based camp inside the cave itself. They have to stay there for at least five or six days and will be completely autonomous on water, food, and other things such as light and heating sources. Of course, they will abide by the motto, carry in, carry out, that includes human defecation. Follow us as we bring you along all the preparation needed for such an adventure. This is, so this is what we resurveyed last time we were there, but we only made it from like here to here. So we didn't quite finish that. Super annoying. No, this is actually, it's not like you're breathing the whole time. You're you're just like climbing and clambering and walking sideways. It's really bad. Too so bad. Well, some of these are, you know, 10 meters, 15 meters deep. Those are more heavy than 10 surveys. The first destination for everyone in the expedition is the residence of Alberta's Speleologist Society members, Kathy and Collins, in Calgary, Alberta. The crew members are now busy unpacking gear that was sent by courier and putting together the needed equipment for the one week of underground exploration. They all carry within their sleigh the food needed for eight days, winter clothing, complete caving gear, and some survey equipment. They face a dilemma where they have to choose between being ready for any situation and packing light. The team has to make sure that everything is there since they will be far from civilization. I have sheets printed out for all of them, most of them are computers, so we can just plug them. The evening was spent studying maps and reviewing the expedition's objective. It is 5 a.m. The team is about to depart for their 20 kilometers of skiing that will bring them to the cave entrance. If everything goes to plan, the expedition should reach the cave entrance by evening. They have to be ready for any kind of weather conditions and pace their progress as they are pulling along close to 35 kilograms of equipment. Soon they will face a time-consuming obstacle on their path. The winter had unusually warm temperatures that year. The result made the team's expedition go through some muddy passages before the glacier. They 
even had to pull the sleighs on rocks. But nothing compared to the climbing of the moraine. The moraine is made of ice, snow, rocks, and dirt that get pushed by the glacier as it's melting. With the unusually warm weather, they have to keep avalanches in mind when negotiating the steep hill of the moraine. But going uphill with the sleigh has proven to be too difficult, and they had to set up a rope to pull them. been skiing since 5 a.m. and it has now started to snow. Clouds are covering the surroundings, making GPS navigation mandatory. When finally, they found what they were looking for, Castleguard Cave entrance. will be using its large opening to set a temporary camp just before gearing up and reaching the underground camp located deep in the cave. Castleguard is, by far, Canada's longest cave with more than 21,011 meters of surveyed passage. Yorkshire Pot Cave, the runner-up, partially located in Alberta, has only 13,812 meters. It's about nine kilometers to reach the ice plug from the entrance. The ice plug, what is considered to be the end of the cave, was first reached by a British caver named Mike Boone in a controversial solo trip during the winter of 1970. Three inches thick, three little soon, eh? Oh, no one expected that. Two weeks early, eh? Jeez. We have to call the trip. 